Find out how thousands of South Floridians could be misdiagnosed with epilepsy. Up next on Comcast Newsmakers. Bringing you the news and information you need from the people making a difference. This is Comcast Newsmakers. Hi, and welcome back to Newsmakers, everyone. 60 to 70,000 South Floridians experience seizures each year, but they're not always due to epilepsy, according to this hour's newsmaker, Dr. Eduardo Locatelli. He's the medical director for the Florida Neuroscience Center at the Epilepsy Monitoring Unit at Holy Cross Hospital. And thanks very much for joining us. What's the reason for the misdiagnosis? Well, the, the conception that gen seizures are usually generalized shaking, that's you know, obvious for everybody that that is a seizure, but seizures come in many different ways. Actually, there's two things. It could be misdiagnosed or it could be underdiagnosed. By misdiagnosed, I mean that people will have shakes that actually are not epileptic in nature. They are shaking, they look like seizures, but they are actually not seizures. There's mm -hmm. a number of things that can cause that, being, you know, passing out like syncope or low sugar levels or m many different psychiatric conditions, people can shake because of them but they are not epileptic seizures, which is abnormal uh, electrical discharges on the brain. I guess the difference with what you do here at the uh, Epilepsy Monitoring Unit at Holy Cross is, is the length of diagnosis, mm -hmm. the, le the length of monitoring and trying to figure out what the problem is. Exactly, what we're trying to do at the unit is basically bring the patient in, connect it to the electroencephalogram, basically electrodes in the surface of the head to record brain wave activity. And that is matching with the video. We put them in a private room and we watch them. It could be a day, two, five days, as long as it needs so we capture the event. Mm -hmm. Capturing the event help us to really interact with the patient, look the features, the characteristic, and really you know, certify the diagnose that way. How many reasons for epilepsy are there out there? Well, uh, probably more than 100 and counting. I mean, this is a long, long way uh, list because uh, almost anything in the brain can ultimately cause seizures. Um, uh, interested enough, when you look at the cause of epilepsy, uh, half of the time we don't know what it is. And it is a very small change uh, in the brain, which is usually an electrical discharge of a misconnection. Mm -hmm. uh, now with the advances of MRI technology, you know, MRI uh, magnetic resonance imaging, and the improve and the resolution we are finding very small abnormalities that the patients are born with, or very small things, so each year we are diagnosing this, but still half of them, we don't know exactly what is causing. Are the treatments for epilepsy better today than ever before? Absolutely. Um, today in the market, there's more than uh, 20 medications that we can use, but let me uh, take you back to some, an algorithm of the treatment, because as we were mentioning before, there's a lot of uh, misdiagnosis. So out there, there's uh, many patients that have three or four medications. They're being treated with those now. Now, what I see in the epilepsy unit, that uh, half of those patients don't have epilepsy. They have shakings, they have convulsions, but they're non-epileptic, so they're not responding to that treatment because in the first place, they didn't have epilepsy. Now, if you take those patients that actually go through the unit and do have epilepsy, or epileptic seizures as I call them, uh, about 60 or 70% of them do very well with medication. They are under control. They don't seize anymore, their life is good, they can drive. But about 30 to 76% of them they continue to have seizures, one medication after the other, and they go through these almost 10 or 12 of them, and they continue to have seizures. Mm -hmm. The great advantage of the epilepsy unit is that we can classify these patients in those that could potentially have surgical intervention, and surgery can be a cure. So it's a great, great difference when you're failing medications to go to the next level and see if you have a, a, a region in the brain that is causing the disturbance that a surgeon can remove and the person without changing any of their faculties or the mental faculties go, go on to have no more epilepsy, no more seizures, you know, with a treatment that is a cure, which is epilepsy surgery. Mm -hmm. So you could probably earmark uh, problems in the brain better today than you could before because of the resolution of the MRIs. Right. Also, what we have in the unit is what we call brain mapping. Basically, when we, uh, the discharges are seen in the video and on the EEG, we can say it's the right side, it's the left side, it's the okay. front, what side. Better and placement. Then better placement. And then we can uh, also okay. stimulate. All right. This hour's newsmaker, Dr. Edward uh, Locatelli, with an inside look at what occurs in the brain when a patient experiences a seizure. I'm Spiro Campin. Thanks for watching. The preceding has been a presentation of Comcast Newsmakers. And now, back to...